<laughs> Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Happy fall, or as we like to say, summer part two. Is it officially fall yet? Because the weather is changing. The transition has begun. We are no longer the hot and humid and insufferable days of summer. We had a crisp, a crisp front come through. And instead of having highs of 95 and 96, we're down to like 90, which means it's officially summer part two, AKA fall for Florida. I don't know about you, but my garden is getting very wild. We neglected some things during the summer. The tropical plants loved everything and they went, they did this. I'll show you some other areas too, but they, they are, um, they just, they've gone a little bit crazy. And then some of my plants that weren't as keen about the high heat of summer, the high sun intensity, uh, it dropped those five degrees. That sun intensity came down like two UV index and now they've gone crazy. This whole place has gone crazy. I will show you. But well, here's what I was thinking about today. Motivation, inspiration. Let's get our punch list going to get things back under control, to knock out some things that, you know, you just been like, you know, they're just lingering. Cause I've got things that have been lingering cause I've been avoiding this a bit. Let's be real. Cause it's like, it was gross. So gross. So now that's a little bit cooler, it's time to get back into that groove. No, today we are not gonna go crazy. So if you're feeling like, oh no, here comes a ginormous project kind of, no. We just, we're gonna go do some odds and ends. That's what we're gonna do today. Let me show you how the fall, the fall Florida garden is starting to look at the beginning of season so that you can see how much it changes across the season. And not because leaves are changing color, but more because I'm getting it back under control so this, this is what the garden has been looking like. If you remember, it was only a month or two ago. We did a lot of like really good prune. We've actually come back through and pruned and cleaned up a couple times since that video, which was a month or two ago. But you can see our invasive tropical Mexican petunias. Remember this? Look how nice and neat I had it here. And they've totally come back tenfold. But the blossoms are pretty, so we're okay with it. And then our cordillions. Nope. Our cleodendrum. Do you remember this it was kind of at the beginning of summer? It was looking a little, uh, it was just little twiggies. And now, boom, it's exploded again. It loves the heat. It loves all this. It loves the mess that is Florida summer. But it's getting a little bit big. It's getting in front of my door again. This firebush, it was, it was here. It was a stump. And now it's exploded again. <laughs> it's up on my roof line. It must be chopped back again. Sweet potatoes, always my sweet potatoes, going crazy and nuts. They've climbed over onto my desert rose. We've also got some Everglades tomatoes that have popped up right here and some kooka melons. And our goldenrod right here, well, you know, we had a storm, they kind of went this way and that way. But behind them, oh, looking still so beautiful and more and more flowers are coming in. We've got our spotted bee balm, AKA dotted horse mint. Look how pretty that is. It's getting hot out, but you know what? I think what I'm really curious if any of you guys have this is the dotted horseman. You know, this guy right here. Uh, my whole area right here smells like mint now. <laughs> Ever since it got really ridiculously hot out. I don't think I've mentioned it before, but I'm curious, are all y'all having that too? Who have dotted horseman? Do you just have like a bubble of mint smell? <laughs> Cause I do. This area just, it's nice. Opens up your nasal passages if you have grass allergies like me. Interestingly, all this frog fruit that went out of control got in control and isn't as nutty as possible, but still needs a little bit of a uh, edging right here just to take it back. Oh, and look at these. These golden rods were actually ones that I yanked from other areas and I just threw them in here. But we're just still waiting for them to flower because any moment now, any moment, these will be yellow. I want to show you up front more because um, a lot of you talked about your seminal pumpkins not looking good, especially I've heard a lot of comments like in July and through August. And now that we're in September, um, many of you, if you've been seeing your seminal pumpkin struggle, have probably seen them start to turn the corner. Hopefully there's, you're seeing them start to turn the corner because that's what happened with mine. Mine were sad. They sometimes flowered once in a blue moon. And then over the last couple weeks, well, this. 
Hello, Seminole Pumpkin. Where did you start? Oh, back here? Oh, all the way in the dune sunflower. No? You didn't start over here? Oh, so you started over here. Except you didn't start here. You jumped from over here. You came over here. I mean, honestly, look at this. It's over all of this. It's in there, over there. It's all throughout the garden. They're jumping over everything. I mean, look at this. This has gone absolutely crazy. I'm gonna have to get these all out of the storm gutters. But this is an insane amount of growth that's just happened. I mean, how much of this garden is covered by just crazy amounts of seminal pumpkin? And this is only was like a couple plants this year. We didn't have a lot in this garden left. And as soon as it cooled down, just the tiniest bit, they have gone running everywhere. You can see you can see our Puerto Rican trellis. They are starting to die off down at the bottom, but I have so many pods to harvest. And it's like a little wild nut. It jumped down. It's come up here into this Simpson stopper. It's dumped all over my echinacea, which like a week ago had nothing on it. It just crept in here somehow and just went fluck. Oh, more dotted horse mint. But I mean, it's just crazy. You can see it's gone here and here absolute insanity but the challenge is some of my native plants they didn't blossom the way I expected them to and one of the big reasons you know it you've heard about it it's this Poinciana we've got too much shade in here if y'all remember in the summer I pruned this up Ben and I spent tons of time pruning this up and look at it it's already touching the trellis again already touching the trellis I mean we've already pruned it significantly up twice this year twice and that thing's going crazy. Oh, but you know what? You know who's happy right now with those bee balm? The bees. Can you see everybody? There are a ton of them. And you may be thinking, with all this greenery, with all this intense growth that we've had happen over the summer and the beginning of fall, that one of the ways we could have pulled it back, one of the ways we could have let it like not get so crazy is we could have shut off our sprinklers for the summer so that it wasn't just like getting overwatered Except the thing is, we've had our sprinklers off for months, months and months. Even with this year being a slow rain year, right? We are getting like a foot less water over the summer than we typically would. And look how green this place is. Look how, shh, look how crazy it is. <laughs> it's so wild right now. It's, it's like a lot. Oh, who am I stepping on? Oh, there's a pumpkin. <laughs> There's so much going on. We just need to tidy it up. But one of the reasons it looks so green and doesn't have as many flowers as I would have liked is because of that Poinciana, which is why for sure this fall, it's gonna, once it cools down <laughs> a bit more than five degrees, I'm taking that whole thing out because it's just, it's just not allowing everything to live its best life. Though we did have plants like, I think things like our um, Echinacea went a lot longer than it probably would have if the sun intensity had hit it for longer but we're just not getting the blooms. Though one of my favorite blooms from last year is just coming back. It's definitely a September bloomer. Here it is. It's my Marsh Rattlesnake Master. And it's, I love it with the blue. Oh, and it's just coming back. So it'll get bigger and bigger than even this. So you can see there's tons of buds on it already. We have another plant right there. I think there's another plant somewhere in here. And it might have been a bit more challenged just because of the fact that we did put our sprinklers off. What is that? Oh, that's, is that just a weird looking, oh, it's a powder puff. Oh, interesting. But yeah, um, it might not have done as well as it could have because we had our sprinklers off and because it was a low rain year. I know it looks like it's gonna rain right now. But I'm excited that it's coming back. It's coming back. Which for those who are vegetable gardeners and stuff like that. I mean, if you get stuff well established before the summer, I mean, you shouldn't really generally have to water. Yeah, so you can see the big, the front is looking quite crazy, which means it can get kind of overwhelming, you know, when you're sitting here going like, okay, we gotta get back into it, I'm starting to cool down a little bit, needing to get some stuff done, because there's like a lot, it's like a lot, a lot. But that's one of my projects for over the cooler months this year, is starting to set up stuff in a way that I kind of have a maintenance plan for throughout the year because we last year had a maintenance company, but they kept killing stuff, which wasn't good. 
this year it's all me and Ben, but we just really haven't gotten our heads wrapped around how to do all this, how to do all this. But there's some odds and ends projects that I really need to get done. And I wanted to take you guys along with them. And I would love to hear what projects are you doing to get your garden a little less wild, a little bit back in control, looking cute and pretty, or maybe you are a superstar and you already got that maintenance plan down. You already know how to keep it contained because <laughs> you're a rock star and you should definitely be acknowledged for being a rock star and doing that, you know? So get your praise. Let us give you a little bit of a clap, clap, clap. And for all those who didn't, that's okay. We're in it together. <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting our seminal pumpkins. So much so, look, I have a pumpkin. I accidentally ran over it. I didn't know it was there. And I was backing out of the driveway and then all of a sudden I was like, squish. Yeah, happened. Whole pumpkin. One of the first projects I need to do, I'm like almost in my neighbor's yard, is I'm going to be taking this papaya out because I need to give it to my neighbors, Ray and Rosie. If you guys have, you guys might remember that name. Ray and Rosie are the ones who gave me the ahi dulce peppers, AKA I call them ahi say, because that's what they called them. And I gave them a papaya two years ago, I think it was. Well, that papaya plant, I guess, died during the recent hurricane. So Ray was asking me if I had another papaya plant and I was like, I don't think so. But then I went snooping around and I was like, oh, look, I do have one. They always are popping up here and there. So I need to get this out and get it in a pot and then get it over to them. It might be a little bit on the big side, but it's free plant. So really all we're doing is just digging a hole and just a little bit I'm gonna take that over to Ray and Rosie and just drop off and say like get in the ground quick <laughs> because that's really all you got to do if you want to learn how to transplant papayas I've done it a bunch of times before I actually have a video I'll link it at the end in case that's a very particular task you need to do today <laughs> next up I'm on a hunt I had saw a little fire bush the other day and I was going to send it to Connie so I wanted to get it out get in a pot, get it kind of resettled because I need to ship it to her. So we are going to be snooping around for some tiny fire bushes because for a while now I've known I need to send one her one to her, but the all of them were too big. And I don't mean just from like a shipping, but like the root systems I knew would be way too deep. So it was like, like I could get them out of the ground, but like, I don't know if they'll survive. So I'm gonna grab one of those. I feel like today is a little bit of a gift giving of plants is some of what I need to do because um, I have the papaya to give to Ray and Rosie. I wanted to find, see if I could find a fire bush that was small enough um, because I had pulled so many before I had told her I was going to do that. I want to reseed some of my trays because a bunch is doing really good, but like a few trays, I think I told you guys that before, not doing so great. So they just need to be reseeded. We've gone long enough. I also need to pull some ferns for another project for a giveaway, but I'm only gonna pull a couple because I don't have all the pots here um, that I ordered. So I'll pull a couple with you guys. And I'll tell you a little about it because it's really exciting actually. So let's go, let's go looking, let's go firebush hunting. So when I had thrown, so actually one thing, uh, these are Puerto Rican black beans. I had thrown a pods down after my first harvest and they're actually doing great in this ridiculous amount of shade. So if you have a really shady area and you want to grow some veggies, you know, do that. Cause it's definitely, they're doing stuff and they're throwing out some flower. I think they just started, yeah. They're just starting to throw out some flowers. So if that's something that's been on your list of like, I have a shady area, Puerto Rican black beans, but though I know no one can ever get them. I just shipped some to Katie for, um, cause she, she was so kind and wrote a wonderful review and she won a little prize. And some of it was actually the Puerto Rican black beans. So I was just like, hey, have some. Cause I know everyone's looking for them and I don't always know where to tell you to get them from. So yeah, but I know Patrina has been giving them out cause she's trying to spread them all about so more people can have them because they're great. They're just, I mean, they're like, but you can't have a lot cause they go crazy. Okay, I think I see some, some fire bushes here. I always know where to look. It's wherever the birds like to hang out and the birds love hanging out right up here. 
It's their jam. It's their fun place. We got some Virginia creeper amidst that's just a weed. But there we go. Here we go. So I got this one and I got a couple small ones there. So I'm gonna go grab us the shovel and let's see if we can get those out. Oh, that's just a oh, this might be too big. It's this whole thing. Yeah. See, this is ugh. See, this is why it becomes problematic, is like you start getting pretty decent sized roots. Plus, this is just kind of like a ginormous plant. Dang it. I was pretty sure there was one over here, so maybe that wasn't the one I saw. They pop up constantly, so I'm not worried. Eventually, I'll find one for Connie. It's just, when? How long? And can, to it, can I get it to it fast enough before it, like, takes off? Which brings me to something. Um, Because there's lots of bugs flying around, and it's hot, and it's humid, and I'm starting to sweat, which is always gross. <laughs> but one of the things is that someone was saying to me, the other day that like, you know, they were feeling a little off. They're feeling like they're behind and they were feeling like they were excited to start gardening in fall, but they were feeling overwhelmed because there's, you know, they went to their vegetable beds and there was like tons of bugs and aphids and problems. And I, one thing I wanted to say is just because we can ramp up and start doing vegetable gardening again, does not mean fall's necessarily easy to grow in. It's just, you can start growing stuff in it in fall and it's not as miserable outside as it is in the summertime. So for my newbies who've been listening and following along and are like, this is my year, this is my thing, I'm gonna finally get it. And then you're getting out to your garden, you're seeing tons of weeds and you're seeing lots of bugs and you see lots of just like, problem plant like plants that look like they've been overwhelmed by pests and now you're starting to like second guess like it's this is doable and the stuff that's probably still left in your garden even if it's the plants you're going to plant now we're already stressed we're already miserable and we're super vulnerable to all the mess item one item two you're what unlike winter up north where it's like here's the clean slate like, there's no clean slate. It may be an out of control mess. That might be what you're walking into. So this is why like, just make a list where the five things you need to do first that like will give you some success. Like, is it, you're gonna do vegetable beds? So like, do you have the bed? Did you fill it with soil? Have you started seeds or bought some plants? Like, keep it simple. Don't solve the world. Just do a little bit and don't, get like don't let the fact that like some stuff looks really crazy right now <laughs> take away from the fact that you can be starting stuff one two i know a bunch of people said i feel like i'm really late in starting because now we're in the middle of september and like did i did i miss it did i miss the like i could have the fact that i can finally garden in florida no you know you didn't miss anything we can garden all year round it just changes like what we're gonna garden. Like, do we focus more on like a banana versus a tomato versus wildflowers? Like that's all that changes. And you do have a pretty big window that we just, I usually talk more like ideal timing, but if you're at the end of September and you're like, I really wanna start tomatoes, but now Jacqueline's saying it's October and forget tomatoes, like still try. Don't like weather changes every year so while the statistical average is that tomato plants that produce big fruits won't quite do as well because a lot of those studies are based for the agricultural producers you know those big farms <laughs> like you're one plant because you can man like you're not doing rows and rows and rows on acres of land like you're like you can move your pot into a little bit warmer spot or you can move it out into a sunnier spot or you can like you know like you have the capacity to maybe work around the fact that it's like not ideal for a farmer does that make sense so like you didn't miss anything you've missed nothing and also we come back right around to tomatoes in just like a few months anyway so like if you're feeling like ah life is lifing and I just can't you know, I just can't get to my tomato planting or my pepper planting or whatever it is that you were trying to grow. 
it's okay like wait a few months and then it's time again like wait till the new year and it'll be basically time again for most of the state to like try tomatoes we wouldn't recommend like big tomatoes but still try tomatoes like all sorts of tomatoes and when i mean big tomatoes i mean like the big like you can still do like tomatoes so that's one and two two if it's just because of vegetables and you think the vegetable thing's gonna be over do more there's more vegetables coming like October's a great month for planting lots of seeds. November, January, February. I mean, you've got so much time. That's like saying you missed gardening up north and it's like the end of February. You haven't missed anything. I just try to keep you guys ahead. I try to give you guys tips so that you're like ahead of stuff so that you're not like, whoops, I missed a whole month. I try to get you guys so that you have time to go buy the stuff and then it ships from wherever and then you're still okay. Like, does that make sense? Like, I'm always trying to be a little bit ahead of you guys so that you guys have time. So you didn't miss anything. Anyone who's feeling like they missed anything. And the bugs, Florida has lots of bugs. Florida is an evergreen state. There's always gonna be bugs. The bugs will be bugging. But when you have a balanced system, and the first year, it's not balanced. The first time you put a pot in and all that stuff, like it's gonna, but the second year, the third year, it just gets better and better. It's like a fine wine. It's gonna get better and better, right? That's why I did appreciate everyone who was like when, with my uh, new beds. They were like, I love that see that you're changing things. And that's the other thing. Like you just keep changing stuff, you know? Like something works, you keep doing that. Something's not working as well, you change it. And that's kind of the fun of the gardening, right? It's like you didn't get into it, so you would do it once and then never do it again, right? You, and that's the thing with gardening. Like you didn't get into it because you're like, I'm just gonna do it one time and one weekend and never, ever, ever, ever do any more gardening, right? Like you, you did it because you wanted to be outside and you like plants and you wanna grow food and you want flowers and you wanna be out in the nature. Maybe not right now because it's like bleh, but like that was probably in your head. I'm gonna guess that was probably in your head. So it didn't go great, that's okay, just but try. That's the thing. I feel like Florida gardening teaches you resiliency. You will learn to be more resilient because stuff is going to be funky and different and weird. And some of it's going to work great. Things you didn't expect are going to work great, are going to work great. Things that you thought were going to be hard won't be. Things you thought were going to be easy will be. It just happens. And that's okay. And you're going to put stuff in a place and you don't like it and you're just going to get rid of it. Like <laughs> my mom was like, how are you going to take off the tree? that she put in just five years ago. I'm like, well, it's not working. So I'm, I could sit here and be like, well, I paid $35 25 years ago. Or I could be like, get the tree out and like, let's make a much more productive front yard for wildlife and for ourselves. And we'll get that $35 back. That's not a problem. I mean, like, are we gonna really let $35 hold us back from making some changes that make us happier with the garden we have? Heck no. So try stuff. And then someone was saying they were getting their vegetable garden started. They were asking me a lot of questions. And here's my thing. And I was saying it in the last video, I kind of alluded to it. I've talked about it in other videos. Cause I know some people were like, well, these beds work if I put it in this very specific conditions, maybe probably depends what you want to grow in it. But just cause I'm putting in beds right now, maybe it's not the right season for you to put in beds. I highly, highly, highly recommend you test an area first with something that costs less. I mean, if you want to commit and you want to just spend money, go for it. Use my affiliate link, then I get some money too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you were starting a new space, like start it in pots, start it in grow bags, check the spot out because it's easy to move a grow bag around, right? Like if you need to move it 10 feet one way or five feet, because the sun's going to start moving, right? The sun right now for me, it sets right there. But come January, it's going to be setting there. The light really shifts. so your garden's gonna change throughout the year. So it's better to test it. That's why I said I did in-ground beds because I could just rip up the ground, but I wasn't committing money. Okay, well, I still committed money to it, but not a significant amount of money. But if it's your first time, like what I would recommend is start with something that's less cost and more mobile because you can get success. And then you design the garden that's pretty and more structured and you're putting in metal beds or you're putting in like, you know, cement brick borders and all sorts of stuff, but you feel more okay about doing something more permanent because you've tested it, okay? Or just buy them. 
you know, I'm not going to be mad. You want to buy them, you move them later, don't just whatever. But I think that's, that's the way I approach it is test it, see how it goes. And then, yeah, that's how we did the trellises up front. That's how we did um, some of the beds, the beds that were up front. We did in-ground stuff first. We did homemade borders first. And then we bought metal beds or we bought cattle panel trellises. We did all that after. So that's my process. That's what I would recommend if I were your situation, if you're new to things, is the more mobile. And even before I did the in-ground beds, I did containers. That's how I had all those like terracotta containers that the strawberries were in. That's where they came from. It's the first time as I did that. And I learned a lot about where I didn't want to put the beds, which is why I have so much in my book about things that don't work because I've tried a lot of things and they didn't work. So I can tell you so that you can avoid it and be like six steps ahead of me. But what we need to do now is we're gonna grab some ferns, some really annoying ferns that I don't want, but I'm working with, um, so I'm part of the Florida Native Plant Society, specifically Pinellas County, specifically the Conservation Committee, specifically the Pollinator Pathway Project. <laughs> and we, um, me and another member, Andrea, we worked with interns over the summer and about how we could get more native plants with college kids. And I'm gonna do another video where I talk way more about this, but one of the things is like the kids these days, they're into the conservation, they're into the helping of the plants. And they, like some of you guys, are newbies to things. And what newbies do is they make choices based on how pretty things are or whatever's popular. And the problem is, is that the way that most college kids are gardening is through houseplants and houseplants is one of the easiest places to buy invasive species to Florida. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is we're doing a giveaway of plants um, over at Ecker College and I'll talk way more about it because I'll show and I'm going to show you guys way more about it. But so I'm committing um, some ferns because <laughs> I have tons of ferns and if they're going to buy ferns from the store they often end up with the invasive version of a sword fern versus the native version. So if they're gonna get a fern, might as well get a native fern. So I'm gonna be starting to yank some of these. So I'm gonna get a couple today and then I've got pots coming in because we're giving away at least 20 of those. Plus we got other species we're gonna be getting that giving away. So we're really excited about this. Um, and the interns we worked with with the college were really, really excited about this. So, cause we're gonna be giving away like a hundred plants. <sighs> so I need to start pulling so I can get them in pots so that they're ready to go for the giveaway in a couple weeks. So let's go grab some ferns. Why is it when I pull you normally? Come here. Come up here. There we are. Okay. So this is a native sword fern. And the way you can tell is it does not have little balls on them. Otherwise they look pretty similar. <laughs> so one plant. There we go. Oh, that's a nice, that's a much better pull. Look at that. That's a nice pull for putting in a pot. Two. So we're not going to go too crazy with these guys right now because I've got like 25 pots coming so that I can pot all this up. But what we're going to do is we're just going to throw these in a couple pots. And I'll add some soil to my papaya over there. So when I drop it off my neighbor's house, it doesn't croak before they get home. Found one. I found a baby firebush. Okay, finally. I knew I'd find one eventually. We'll make sure it lives before I try shipping it. And yeah, yay. You know, it's getting really hot. I don't think I'm gonna be doing reseeding today. <laughs> and that's okay. Honestly, if, if same for you, come on now. Let me know what you guys got accomplished because while it may not seem a lot, every little bit, right, makes a change. 
little by little. We're getting better. We're getting back on track. It's going to get cooler. We're looking forward to it. We're loving it. So let me know in the comments and if you want to learn how to transplant papayas, if you have that very specific need, or if you want to know how I came up with my garden plan, you know, check out these videos right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!